It was on the Solemnity of All Saints, November the 1st, 1950, that Pope Pius XII solemnly proclaimed as a divinely revealed truth that the Immaculate Mother of God, the Ever-Virgin Mary, on the completion of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heaven. When I think of Mary's assumption, the word hope comes to mind. Hope is everything, because without it, we have great difficulty living. It is hope which allows a person to keep going. It is divine hope in God that gives life meaning, tells us where we are and what we must do and how we are to live. So many people today lack real hope because knowledge of the true God has been forgotten or pushed aside. St. Paul, writing to the Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 12, reminds the Ephesians that before their encounter with Christ, they were without hope and without God in the world. He knew very well that they had different gods and religions, but their gods had proved questionable, and no hope came from these man-made myths, which were full of contradictions. Paul taught them about the Christian life, that there is a future. They may not know all of the details, but they know that their lives will not end in uncertainty and emptiness, that the future has been thrown open. The one who has hope lives differently. The one who hopes has been granted the gift of new life, said Pope Benedict in his encyclical Spe Salve. With this in mind, we can see how practical a thing it was for God to assume the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven. We are encouraged to keep our eyes on the things that are above, to have hope and faith, so that in Christ we may merit the glory that is indicated by the great sign of Mary's assumption into heaven. St. Paul reminds us of this glory when he said, for since the death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a man. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. It is Mary's assumption that makes this truth present for us, as it has been recognized and celebrated since the 5th century in the life of the Church. In the Gospels, we learn that Mary's cousin Elizabeth is expecting a child, John the Baptist. Mary was not the one who told Elizabeth that she was pregnant with Jesus, but as soon as Mary drew close to Elizabeth, the child within Elizabeth leapt for joy, and Elizabeth, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, recognized that Mary was that woman of perfect faith that allowed God to bring his promise of a Messiah to fulfillment. Mary herself, in all truthfulness and humility, proclaimed, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Is not Mary's simple and undivided faith an indication of how we are to live? Did not Jesus say in the Beatitudes, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Did not Mary receive heaven immediately at the end of her earthly life when God assumed her body and soul into heaven? The message here for us is to keep our attention every day on the higher things, to be a person of faith and hope, to be truly poor in spirit, where we magnify the Lord with our lives. In today's world, often, we do not lift our eyes to the higher things, and God is rarely mentioned, and relativism pervades so much of our thinking, yet Elizabeth could not keep quiet. She states the truth about Mary, and why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary herself, in her poverty of spirit, is caught up in her admiration of God and what God has done for her and through her. How could the kingdom of heaven not be given to such a person? 
For the mystery of Mary and the mystery of the Church are bound together. We cannot understand one without the other. In Mary's assumption, we see our hope to be with the Lord one day.